welcome to Unapologetic. Today we're going to be reacting to a video of Peter Bogosian at Portland State University where he's positing the question, are there two genders and asking students to agree or disagree? Some students and faculty were not very happy with this question and decided to ambush him. Let's get into it. Yo, 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 what's up, guys? Happy Monday. It is good to be here with you. I'm your host, Am Lepinobi, and Taylor's in the producer's bay. What's up? Boom, 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 boom. It's good to be here. Let me know how your weekend went. Drop that down in the chat below. Today, we are either going to be making your day a whole lot better with this video or absolutely ruining it, ruining it with the amount of lunacy we are about to watch uh, just ensue <laughs> because a question is asked on this campus. Uh, you guys might be familiar with a man by the name of Peter Bogosian. I don't know if he's currently a professor in Portland, but he certainly was a professor in Portland and actually came uh, to fame after writing this entire essay about why he was leaving his job as a professor due to being just attacked and ambushed by woke students and faculty day in and day out. And he really spoke about the death of liberal education in America due to woke ideology and woke dogma infiltrating all of our public institutions. So here's a video of his that recently went viral. It's got 1.2 million views and he's simply going on to Portland State University uh, and he's asking the students to engage in a thought experiment or a thought driven game where he's asked a question and the statement or i should say in this video is there are two genders now the students walk up and there's little lines on the street where they can stand at i strongly agree all the way to i strongly disagree and they can give their their spectrum of thought and explain why they believe the thing that they believe i guess his game didn't last long because he was confronted by students who were very upset with him even asking the question and encouraging debate on this topic. So we're gonna we're gonna react to this video and see what we find. Let's get into it. What would it take for you to move not all the way over there, just one line, just one line? I guess if they told me how many genders specifically there were, I can't think of anything that would change my opinion, I guess. But if you got some friends with you on Go somewhere else, you're not wanted here. But before we get to the girl screaming from the rooftop like that, I, I wanna talk about the guy. He says something really smart. You know, if you're gonna tell me that there's more than two genders or there's not two genders or there's some sort of gender-based spectrum, can you tell me how many they are? And if you could, maybe that would solidify your the point that you're making just a little bit more than saying, you know, it's infinite and anybody can be whoever they want to be. But of course, his point is probably going to go unheard because this young woman interrupts. Oh, you're giving me the finger? Hi. <laughs> you're standing in, front, standing of in front of the work social building. work building. You're harming individuals by asking that question. I'm harming individuals by asking that question. Well, you want to come down and have a conversation about it? She's flipping him off. How do you not well, get you that? You want to come down and have a conversation? Oh. <laughs> That's okay, so what would it take for... You see what you see how you respond to these things. Now this is quite literally giving me PTSD of being on WSU because you go to a college campus to do something that really in reality is quite benign. Like you're going to talk to people or to give a speech or to have Q and A with the students, and all of a sudden you are just being attacked by these woke goblins who only want to scream at you from the rooftops of their campus without coming down to have a conversation. And it's almost as though you can predict exactly what's gonna happen. You know, the girl screams from the rooftop, you go, hey, I see you're pretty angry. You wanna come and have a conversation with me? No, I have class, but I'm perfectly fine with, with screaming at you from above and on the top of this building while you're down there and you're in no position to rebut anything that I'm saying or any of the accusations that I'm making. In fact, I'll flip you off from up here, but probably won't do it when I come downstairs, uh, which is just perfectly emblematic of leftism today. For you to move to the strongly agree. In this man's class, after a long, controversial 10 weeks of lectures, this giant auditorium on the final day, he posed a question to students. He says, if anybody has disagreed with anything I've said over the last 10 weeks, 
come down and sit in this chair in a spotlight in the middle of the auditorium. Here's a platform. Tell me to my face. Mm. Which is, I'm, I'm glad. I, I was the only one who walked down and you gave me an A. <laughs> <laughs> See? And that's, that little uh, story, anecdote, just points to where Peter is as a person and what he's trying to encourage in his students. Like, he wants free thought. He said, if you would disagree with anything that I've said, come down and, uh, you know, s stand on your soapbox and make the case for why you disagree with me. And he said he was the only one to walk up and do that. People are so scared to disagree or just want to stay in their little echo chamber and not share anything these days. Yeah, Dennis Prager famously on his show will take calls from leftists who disagree first. And I think Ben Shapiro does too. When he yep. gives a speech somewhere, he's like, you get to cut the entire line and be the first one to have your, you be platformed and you have your voice heard uh, before anyone else because but they're interested in the discussion and the debate, whereas the people screaming from rooftops generally are not. <laughs> generally are not. But lucky for you guys, the people on the roof do come downstairs <laughs> and they do come to talk to Peter. Of course, they don't come alone because the woke mob does not travel alone. They do not travel in solitude. They never want a one on one conversation. They want their views expressed while being backed by 20 to 30 of their fellow peers who are there to just blow the dog whistle for everything that Peter says. So here we go. Excuse me. Hi, I'm so curious about what's um, what's happening out here. Oh, you want to you uh, it's a critical thinking game where we look take at how a many look at of claims them. and okay. you step on a line you want to play. Well, um, you want to watch the game played? Well, uh, we were watching from up there, actually, because we actually we have we happen to see the sign from up in the School of Social Work, which is on the sixth floor. And some of our trans students saw the statement. Um, there are only two genders. Well, thanks for coming down to talk. Uh, <laughs> It was pretty activating and upsetting, not knowing the context. We thought it was sort of a statement that was being made, um, but not not a thought exercise necessarily. Would you like to see how the game is played? No. 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 I think we understand. No, I don't. I I walked down from the roof of this building after seeing what you were doing. I made uh, I made up my mind about what you were doing already before asking you. And instead of walking on and just uh, respectfully trying to engage in a conversation and understand what it is you're doing, I'm in fact going to walk onto the display that you've set up and with complete disregard for everything that you've created here today and then tell you that what you're doing is harmful and that I don't want to hear why it is that you're doing it and I don't want an explanation. He could have quite literally been like, he could have been like, I am a gender affirming pediatric specialist who is advocating that children be able to transition medically. And I'm doing this, uh, this project to have these conversations with, with college students to, to make them aware of this issue. They would never know that because they don't care to understand. They've already made up their minds about what he's doing, what message he's putting forth, even though that's not the message he's putting forth whatsoever. And they are just ready to tear down everything that he's doing, so long as they're in a group, mind you. Is something that yeah. should be a game, though? Mm, an like exercise? You want to you want to use uh, non? You want to use defund the police as one? Well, just thinking about what it looks like. Yeah. What does it look like <laughs> to, other, to, to other see like one, two, three, four, five? Which is so funny because that is what wokeism is. I'm like, no, I'm black, but I don't agree with with you know the Democratic Party. I don't agree with the but I'm just talking about what you look like. You know, I just care about what you look like. And that's what makes me make my opinions uh, of what you are and who you th and how you think. I just saw what your exercise looked like and it looked like something that offended me. Therefore, I am offended. Five white men with a sign that says there's only two genders. It, you could have been like the Westboro Baptist Church girl. What is white? Why did you identify us on the base of our race? Well, are you the best people to be hosting that that dialogue? About no, but you representative of that community. Okay, but I asked you a question. Why did you identify me and these people on the basis like, of their exactly race? What it looks like, right? Kind of like the activating, triggering aspect of it all. <laughs> so you think that it's ex morally acceptable to identify people on the basis of their race? Oh, guys, I just want to point out how brilliant what he is doing here is. How brilliant. He is not making a statement at them. He is not telling them what they are doing. He is not asserting anything that they're doing wrong. He is putting the ball in their court and asking them a question and asking them to explain why they've just done something. And you can only, you know, step in that quicksand yourself. Why did you just identify me by my race? Uh, um, well, you're doing something that's activating and triggering. Wait, wait a second. Let's, we're not talking about what I'm doing. Why did you just identify me by my race? 
And all you have to do is just stand there, smile silently and wait, because whatever answer you have for that is not sufficient. You know, it's not it wouldn't be morally correct to identify any other person based on their skin color. But because he's a white man, they think it's OK. And they're not going to say that out loud, most likely. But it's so brilliant to just throw the ball in their court and ask the question and then go, I'll wait for your answer. And hopefully it makes sense because everybody's watching you right now. Yeah, wasn't he formerly a professor at this very university of Portland State? I believe he was, and he was like, think, there was a. I know he was a professor in him. Portland. Yeah. Yeah, and he was getting attacked by the students and just ridiculed by them so much that he was like, I can't do this anymore. Right. I'm but, over. So he's definitely been around the block a few times when it comes to this type of stuff and, right. and had interactions like this. But you're right, it's a very skillful thing that he's not getting distracted by their efforts to reframe the conversation mm -hmm. uh, on this victimhood paradigm. Right. And instead, he's just saying hey are you against or why are you insisting on labeling us according to our race how is that relevant to this conversation right. does that make us less worthy to speak on the basis of our race and and going back to the original principles of race neutrality and mm -hmm. getting them to have to answer that question it's very smart it's very very smart let's continue and see where this goes um it's not a moral question it's a matter of like <laughs> The fact uh, that it's just about power and privilege. Exists. Yeah, and, and identity yeah, yeah. representation, right? So if you have been... He's like, thank God. She just she just inserted <laughs> herself into answering that question because he was, he was up Shit's Creek on that one. Have you ever heard a more Marxist reframing of, uh, it's not a moral question, it's a question of power and privilege. <laughs> Like, That's exactly what it is. Just in case you're wondering how what their frame of mind is and how they think. It really is. Like when we watch that video of Emmanuel Aucho talking about uh, the George Floyd riots and he's like, why are you guys rioting? Why are you guys rioting? And he basically says, well, it's not a question of whether or not rioting is morally right or morally wrong. It's it's a question of power and privilege and people being hurt and people being angry. It's exactly what they're saying here. It's amazing how you can just duplicate uh, the dogma in, in every single situation. It's almost like they just copy and paste it and then uh, switch out black for trans or, or gay for disabled or whatever it is that we're talking about. And it just works. Lockstep every single time you know what you should, what you should uh, be prepared for. There's, there's, there's no questioning. You know, it's always straightforward. You know exactly what you're going to get. Folks out here asking those kinds of questions. And there was well, how do you know we're not queer? Um, that's true. I don't know. But there's not um, sort of a representative, holistic, inclusive feeling. Oh, how many I if I had like, I don't know, whiskey in this cup right now, I'd be doing a drinking game for how many leftist buzzwords are, are being stated throughout this. You're going to hear like folks, inclusive, diversity, just so many things that are just being, there's a specific way that people like this speak. And I think we're getting just a, a microscope placed on it right now. It's unbelievable. Especially from up on high, we're looking down and we see this statement being made. We're curious about it. We're also just worried about the harm being done to passersby. What, what is the harm? So there are people, the who went, they, people who went home because it was so yeah. triggering and We had some students. So I think the, the end result is there. You know you're on film, right? I love it. He has not made a single statement yet. He's not made a single statement. Why did you identify me as why? What was particularly harmful? You guys know you're on film, right? <laughs> Oh, it's amazing. It's totally fine. Okay. There are real people who are really hurt by the statements. So what were they hurt about? Question that. Because that's not how they identify, and so it seems like a really triggering statement to just say there are two genders, but that's not been your experience. So it's very harmful and very hurtful, and I just there's human lives that were affected, so I think that's the message we're trying to send, is to maybe consider the questions that you're asking or posing before you begin your thought experiment. Are you are you curious about like what we're bringing to you at all, or do you have? I'm thinking about. Uh, I'm extremely curious, and I'm extremely respectful. I genuinely re respect the fact that you came, as opposed to seven or eight of you giving me the middle finger and saying "fuck you" to me. So mm -hmm. yeah. So, so. If, what do you gain from this? Like, what is your reason that you just want to cause trouble, or like, <laughs> like why are you here? So. Um, I'm fascinated, I do street epistemology, and I'm fascinated if the people, epistemology is uh, from the Greek, basically how you know what you think, okay. So street epistemology is taking it out of the university and bringing it into the street. Oh, she's gonna go home and accuse him of mansplaining now. I know what epistemology is. Street. So I'm very curious. Okay, a she coming out. Or a, uh, <laughs> 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 
You're doing this on the port. Okay, if you don't like the word uh, street, you can call it uh, plaza epistemology, or whatever. But the idea is you take it out of the university and you see if the reasons that people have for things justify their confidence in it. So this is a confidence scale. We can do this with any claim you want. We can do this with a mayor of the city. We can do this with a, should the United States be funding uh, uh, Ukraine? Uh, I think it's eight hundred and billion dollars. Should the United States should, is it more important to control inflation or employment? And we put people on a spectrum. They start on. Let me just explain again. So you asked. So I'll tell you. So what what am I going to do? I think what's happening is. You all get what's happening, but you also walked down uh, to his thought experiment to ask what he was doing. And then when he said, do you want to understand what I'm doing? You said, no, I don't need to understand what you're doing. But you get what he's doing at the same time. And again, it's because they've already made up their minds about what is happening down here before they even walked down. And just it's so interesting to watch these dynamics and watch as the conversation jumps from person to person as each person gets caught in just like the fallibility of their own argument and they get too nervous to actually stand up for what it is they're actually trying to say and then the next person jumps in and the next person jumps in. So he is one man jumping around a conversation with 20 different people who are making no effort to understand what he's saying almost to the point where it does not matter what he's saying. It's like playing whack-a-mole, right? But you're incapable of winning any points. Incapable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are the same type of people who say things like math, math is racist. Mm -hmm. And by uh, by having them, by trying to encourage them to engage in critical thinking, I would imagine that 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 exercise itself is something that they would say, well, that is just leaning, like the critical thinking is part of this patriarchal white supremacist uh, right. thing that was built. These universities were all built on this and that could be triggering to somebody. And it's all about being insulated from uh, things that could challenge their ideology, essentially, uh, as opposed to encouraging free thought. I'm reminded of like on Twitter, uh, they claim to understand free speech in the same way that these people claim to understand this game. And yet whenever you say something they don't like or challenge something that they hold sacred in their ideology, yep. then it's no, you're banned. You, you're not you shouldn't you shouldn't be allowed to even pose this question. Right. And it's just so it's such a limiting place to be as an, an individual. I just again, just keep picturing myself in these people because obviously this was me circa 2018. I would have been the person on this campus to walk down and start screaming at him, but not confident enough to actually defend my beliefs. And the more I see it, I just think of how limited I was as a person at that time and so unready to hear other opinions, even if those opinions were true. So you are essentially locking yourself in what could be seen as a lie and saying, you know, I'm never going to move the dial from this point. I am always going to be here, whether it's just it's really through through nothing more than pride. Just with pride alone, I'm going to stand in this viewpoint. Not only am I going to stand in this viewpoint, but I'm going to attack people who have a different viewpoint uh, than I do, even if they have more expertise, even if they're more well versed on this and even if they're trying to have a civil discussion with me on the subject matter. And I just see myself so hard in this video and uh my gosh i'm so glad i am not fully like that anymore <laughs> wow you know and i think those questions are thought-provoking and important questions um to ask folks in our no, you community don't. i think what we were struck by was the statement on the board that it wasn't a question and that there was no oh. context clues for folks especially trans folks to know that that was not your belief what? that this is more of a thought experience I mean, the next logical thing to ask is, would putting a question mark at the end of that sign, uh, you know, ensure that you will not be here the next time that I do this, if not in a participating capacity? Does making that into a question truly quell the anger and the triggering that you're feeling right now towards me? That's it. Okay, would you be more comfortable if it was a question? Like if I put a question mark. I was like, have you watched this already? I'm more than happy to put a question at the end. A question is a question and not a statement. Right? More than happy to. Some type of warning or a, a statement of like what you're doing on another board so people can walk by and like. We need a trigger warning. Understand that. We need a because trigger warning. Afar, we need you to warn us. This is a thought experiment. Yeah. This is, this is what we're asking people. I'm more than happy to do that. And then that way it can kind of. If, if we, I'm more than happy to do that. I only have one board, but I'm more than happy to put on, this is a thought experiment and put a question mark. If I put a question mark, I could, I don't know, I'm worried that people wouldn't be able to see it, but I'm more than happy to, if so if I put a question mark at the end and then I put another one, 
It's not really, it is a thought experiment, but it's more of an exercise slash game starts thought experiment. If I put that on the end, would all of the uh, uh, concern vaporize? Mm. Uh, no, longer. probably not because we're talking about <laughs> real humans with their life experience. <laughs> No. So wait, if I just do everything that you just complained about and I make it very, very clear, like I'm doing with my words right now, are you guys going to leave me alone? No, we are still going to be here. It just shows you that they don't truly care about what they're saying. And in that statement means they don't truly care about what they're advocating for. Like they really don't care. As much as these people are going to go home after this and go, you know, I did a good thing today confronting that man. I feel like we, we led with education. We taught him about, you know, a, a marginalized community. That's not what you think at all. You're, you're really internally just patting yourself on the back and being like, oh, I'm so, I'm so amazing. I am so good. I am so glad that we went and interrupted this man so that he couldn't do the job that he was trying to do for the day, so that he couldn't have helpful discussions with other people. I truly saved people in that endeavor, which you did not. I just love how you called that he would uh, that that you would, the right thing to do would be to add a question mark and ask them <laughs> would that solve it and then you also called that that wouldn't be enough for them because <laughs> I was like have you because you didn't watch this all like, the way through already no I have right. not watched it all the way through and and he's it's it's so clear that whether or not he's he's cognizant of that's how he's he's playing this right now I just think it's probably through his years of experience in doing this he just knows that that's the right way to go about this is to just always frame it in a question. Always frame it in a question. And no, it is never enough. No matter what you do, it will never be enough. He could literally turn around and be like, you know what? For the rest of the day, I'm going to stand on this street and I'm going to preach that there are more than two genders and that everything's a spectrum. And I'm going to talk about people, talk to people about coming into your class and, and, and learning about transgenderism and gender identity. And they're going to be like, yeah, that's cool, but it doesn't take away what you just did earlier. It's never enough, ladies and gentlemen. No matter how much you apologize, you beg, you plead, you kiss their feet, it's not enough. Their identities, you know, and sort of, we, I might have a very different um, personal feeling walking by because it doesn't target my identity specifically. So we're just sort of here to sort of advocate and um, elevate who might be harmed by a statement. What do you mean by harmed? Harmed? Yeah. Um, well, people who have been like historically and currently oppressed, right, by dominant systems, patriarchy, whiteness. My whiskey um, baby is all just of the systems <laughs> that harm people who don't fit within those sort of more rigid. That's why I you would want be a blacked out right now if I was actually playing that game. Blacked out. You wouldn't see me for another two weeks on this show. Uh, also, shout out to C2 DJ. I hope I said that right. I probably not. Uh, I. Gave a super chat. I wonder how this segment would go if it was a young lesbian black woman since, quote, straight white men, end quote, are always the problem to them. You know, it, it's interesting to, to play around with the demographics of the people and, and you can tell how the scenario would go far differently than it's going now. I wonder if I was out here in place of Peter, how that would go. What do you hypothesize? Um, I think they'd have a much more difficult time arguing with you about it, mm -hmm. uh, which is why it's always so interesting when you do do these uh, debates and, right. and uh, man on the street type stuff. But uh, I think, you know, you'd still get angry protesters because right. at the end of the day, if you're thinking if you're guilty of wrong think and wrong speak, you're going to get the pushback. My, my question is, and I think you alluded to this a minute ago, but what if he was out there saying uh, gender is a social construct? And right. that was the positive statement that right. you're supposed to agree or disagree with. Would they? They wouldn't have shouted at him. No, they wouldn't even be right? down here. Yeah, they wouldn't be they down there. They wouldn't be down here. They'd right. just be like, just another, just another Tuesday here at Portland State University. Right. So if you if you posit uh, the leftist version of the the debate, they're they're not going to push back at all. But right. if you go in there saying there are only two genders, agree or disagree, then all hell is raised. It's so fascinating. It's truly so fascinating. But wait, there's more. This video is still, we have 11 minutes to go on this video. I hope you guys are sticking around and you're actually finding <laughs> some entertainment in this because we are. Question and not a statement. Can I also ask like- no, Let me just, I just want an answer. Is that, that's why you want a question, not a statement? Um, I think a question is an invitation, right? More than happy to put, make it a question. Participate in this conversation. It's more than happy to do that you know, you're representing you know with your identity a belief perhaps when it's especially when it's a statement and so what it looks like is you're out here saying there are two genders and then anyone who doesn't fall within those two sort of binary boxes 
I'm more than happy to do that. More than happy to say this is a thought experiment. No, let me just let me just finish. More than happy to do that. But it seems that there's. If I did that, that would not be enough. Mm -hmm. um, but you might be. You might. Have well, no, no, I just. I just. Oh, he's just handling this so beautifully. He in the the cool part about this, and I could learn from this, is that when I went to Winona State University and was sort of being like in front of this 40, 50 plus group of students who was who were all talking at me and giving me reasons. I was sort of bouncing around and talking to every one of them, whoever was willing to say something. He's being very pointed and treating this situation as if there is not a crowd of people around them. And he's going, no, wait, you said something in front of all these people. I'm going to finish making the point to you first. I'm going to finish having the discussion with you on an individual level. And then we'll take from the peanut gallery. And no matter how much these these students try to uh, insert themselves into the discussion to sort of deflect from the clear owning that's happening right here. He goes, no, mm -hmm, not you, not you. And it does take a little bit of authority in order to do that. You have to be a truly assertive person and stand strong in what you're saying and what you're doing to go, nope, talking to her first, then we'll get over to each one of you. And that is a beautiful way to conduct yourself. You might not be the person to, you know, again, I think asking folks who hold those identities, sort of, if that is enough. So asking queer students, asking trans students, asking gay students, if you're asking about race or poverty or religion, or people who are part of those groups can really inform you about I'm going to need you to go and just search around for a two-spirit Native American and then ask them if they like the framing of the question before you come onto the campus and ask the question. That's essentially what they're saying. And this is another left-leaning tactic that they use on you to just sort of invalidate everything it is that you want to do and everything. Are you not a foundational black American? Are you not descendant of slaves? Well, then you can't speak on that issue or you better go find somebody who is to act as a, a liaison for you and your opinion if that's what you want to do. And to that, you just say, no, I'm, I'm able to have an opinion on any subject matter. It really does not matter what my background is, what my identity is. I'm able to read, hear, see, think, observe the things around me and then come to my own uh, opinion on those things. So they constantly do this. You need to discuss with the marginalized group first before you do an action. I don't see a trans identifying student among these people. There might be one around, but I don't think that they went and asked a trans person how they felt about this before walking down to, to talk to him because they just love the, the whole savior complex thing that's going on here. Better than I can. You wanted to say, I wanted to hear her through. No, I get it. And I'm just wondering, like, are any of you all like trained professionals in trauma-informed care? Like if a transgender individual <gasps> were to come to the space and participate, and then there was a triggering response where they needed emotional support. Like, are you ready to support that? Because this conversation can bring up a lot of emotions and the people that are kind of working within it could be really triggered. But if you're not, if no one's there as like an advocate or support, it could be pretty detrimental to the community you're asking. So I just want to like frame that. If you're not having like an advocate there as someone that can like be an emotional support or regulation for the people that are potentially harmed or triggered in this conversation, whether they're participating or not, like that's a potential thing to think about. And are you guys listening to this? Like, I didn't know how how strange this video was going to get in, in watching this because I've only seen the first couple minutes of it. But she quite literally just told him, you need a mental health professional to even be on our campus asking people this question. I don't know what to say. I mean, it's <laughs> like the, the, the way they're thinking, it's almost like you uh, like does Mark Zuckerberg need to provide you a mental health professional because mm. you sometimes can be exposed to a racist hate comment on your videos because we get plenty of those. Right. You know, right. And it's not like. You don't, you shouldn't, and we said it on Friday, I think, but you don't need to child proof the world. You won't proof the child. And this yes. whole idea is, and they, they, they talk about how it's like a campus is a safe space. It should be a safe space. Uh, you're literally making these like people weak and by treating them this way. And uh, it, it's just such a backwards way of thinking that is having the opposite there. If anyone's causing harm to trans people, it's this type of coddling that's yep. like you can't be acknowledged in the world they do the same thing with like the dave Chappelle on netflix special getting him canceled for making jokes it's like anything you can't touch 
or any oppressed marginalized group you're just saying that they can't stand on their own same same logic at play in affirmative action they right. they can't stand on their own two feet in the world they need us to help them and us white saviors in our woke university we have the we have the solution yep. uh, so you just follow our idea our ideology and spread it across the world and then everything will be utopian right it is just literally a cookie cutter they copy and paste it for whatever given group they are supposedly advocating for they can't help themselves they can't think for themselves. They can't deal with being offended. They can't deal with listening to somebody who has a distant opinion to them. So we need to take care of them ourselves. We need to have specialists if we're gonna ask those questions. How unbelievably bigoted is that? And they don't realize it. They really think they're doing something good. And again, I always say this, it's not the soft bigotry of low expectations. It is hard bigotry. It is straight up hard, bigotry, racism, discriminatory, just preconceptions about what somebody is capable of and what they can do based on these superficial identity markers that mean nothing. It's so wild. <laughs> it could be a flaw in the system because you need to have someone to be able to support that emotionally, mentally, and for people's trauma. So if you're not, it's kind of like these people might leave and feel like without any support or any understanding of what they just went through. So yeah, just to know, think that. And we know people with, who are in the gender minority experience higher rates of suicidal ideation, higher rates of anxiety and depression. Why? And like they're seeing messages like this Why? all throughout their lives. And so campus is supposed to be a safe space where everyone can exist freely in their own identities and who they are and be learning and be talking about these really, really important things within our culture and society. And by walking through this community member that we care about that should be in class today, learning about how to take care of their community and how to support marginalized individuals like themselves and others can't participate today mm -hmm. because they saw that message. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why that's what we mean by harm. Yeah. And honestly, I don't even think adding a question mark is enough. I think it should be more of what is your perspective on gender identity? Because then you're opening up the question or gender in general, right? Because we know that it's not just about identity. It's about who that person is. And, and by, by really framing it in the binary, that's where there's harm. We love for this campus to be a safe space for everybody to walk and move around freely. So long as you are saying exactly what it is I'd like you to say, so long as your little poster board frames the question exactly as I would like you to frame it. That is you living freely. And I'm just going to go out on a real thick limb here and say that student who went home was probably overjoyed to be able to go home from school that day. And if not, then we're dealing with another issue. And that is that a sign like that, asking people, are there two genders? If that can trigger you enough so that you are not willing to participate in higher education for that day, there's a deeper problem. And it's not a problem with the man who put the sign outside. It's a problem with you and the way that you're thinking and the way that maybe you're being coddled in the world that you're living in because it's not reality. There are people running around all over the place that think that there are two genders. Is that gonna stop you from going to college? Is that gonna stop you from doing your job? Is that gonna stop you from taking care of yourself? And if the answer is yes to any of those things, it doesn't speak to a problem with the people who think that there are two genders. It speaks to an internal problem and nobody wants to hear that and nobody wants to deal with that, but we all have to deal with that. We all have to deal with being offended by things. We all have to deal with things that make us uncomfortable. Hopefully it's not a sign you see on the street or we're dealing with a little bit of sensitivity there. But if that is enough to make you go home from school, either A, you just saw an opportunity to go home from school or B, you're not ready for the real world. Yeah, and I just want to point out too, the question that she was okay with him asking was a question like, what is gender? Which if is should is an indicator of what a classic postmodernist deconstructive thinking. I'm totally fine if you want to challenge the notion or explore the possibilities of this construct or this idea or this principle. We can we can always question mm -hmm. uh, reality. We can question biology. We can question uh, the patriarchy. We can question America. We can question race and what yeah. that means. But right. we can't say. Uh, is are there two genders mm -hmm. that is that is framing it as though there is a right answer mm -hmm. that is framing it as though a biological reality might exist and so it's either you come to the conclusion that i want you to come to and espouse that that viewpoint or we just we just question we have no answers and we're all just in this postmodern world where, where we're just calling into question everything and deconstructing and it's like that's their their whole 
worldview has room for for that. Yep. But he, but yeah, and asking the question though must necessarily lead to you coming to the correct conclusion, or else you're a bigot. Yes, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> but yeah, we're so tolerant and open to everybody and everybody's identity, so long as you fall within the framework that we've created for you. Uh, before you you tell us what your identity is. Before we move on, guys, if you're liking the content so far, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified when we go live. That is normally 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and we're constantly posting shorts and videos for you guys. We hope you're enjoying the content. And if you do, show us by subscribing and liking. You've also been showing us through Super Chats, so let's read a few here. One from Common Sense Opposition. Thank you so much for your Super Chat. Uh, and then Nathan Paul gave us a Super Chat. He said, that was actually me at the beginning of the video. I tried sharing my conservative opinions when I could at PSU. Thanks for speaking truth. Nathan, thank you for doing what you're doing, and thank you for trying to do that at Portland State University. Knowing what I know about that campus, it's probably very difficult for you to get by. <laughs> so kudos to you for, for standing strong. And then another one from C2DJ, who says, could he just identify as a specialist? At this point, I think so, right? Because the possibilities are endless when it comes to your identity, so long as you don't identify as a white male heterosexual conservative. Let's continue. Can I put in like my two cents as a non-binary person? Cool. Yes, please. I am gender non-conforming. I use they, them pronouns. Do you know what that means? I believe so. Do you know what that means? Yes. Are you aware of like the theory of social constructionism? Yes. So I'm a-, I'm a I love, it's, so when when left-leaning people, at least, I don't want to say all left-leaning people, but the extreme ones, uh, as I was before, back in back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean 2018, uh, but we'll forget about that. Um, when they meet people who oppose them, they've just immediately invalidated how smart, like to them, this person is a stupid, Neanderthal, rock-headed individual. It doesn't matter if you've studied your entire life. It doesn't matter if you're the smartest man who's ever walked the face of the earth. To them, you are an idiot who they can condescend to at any point and they have no idea who they're talking to when they're talking to Peter Bogosian. Unbelievable, an unbelievable intellect. And to have her go, do you understand what that means? Do you know what it means uh, to to believe in, in social constructionism? It just goes to show how how blinded they are by ideology that they can't even have the the, the recognition of intellect that's standing right in front of them gender studies scholar yeah. so i'm much younger than you these are all you know this is all very new i understand like my parents are boomers they're in their 60s they've had a really hard time understanding so i have a excuse me ma'am that was an ageist statement that you just made i'm gonna need you to be quiet as you have just discriminated against me for my age this is common leftist ideology which you would have understood had you studied it it's exactly how she did, sounds. Did she have a mental health professional um, next to her that could con console the boomer who is triggered by that <laughs> right. ageist slur that she just used? <laughs> just use it against him, baby. Use it against him. Oh, my him. gosh. I to explain this to a lot of people in your generation. So you're aware of social constructionism. You're aware of gender as a social construct. When you say there are only two genders... Those two genders are just social constructs that we made up. From birth, you are assigned a male at birth because you have a penis, I'm assuming. Mm. You present as male, do you identify as male? I, are you asking if I identify as male? Uh, I identify as male. Because you were assigned mm -hmm. a male at birth. You're, are you cis? I'm sorry, I'm not I'm sure where <laughs> you're going with this. I can't I'm, try, I'm trying this. to understand where you're going. But the idea of there being only two genders is a social construct because we have this idea of being assigned, assigned female at birth, assigned male at birth. Now, I'm non-binary. That's something that I have learned about myself over the last six, seven years. After I was a teenager, I was learned about sociology. I learned about gender as a social concept. And I realized that I don't fit into the box of just a cis woman. Okay, my gender is completely whatever I feel like in the moment. I'm not just one solid thing. Hell yeah. Sexuality, gender, these are all social constructs that we've created within our society. I just want to point out that this opinion that she's sharing right now is one that could have been shared throughout the framework of the, the thought experiment that he created. She could have come and with all the other conservative or liberal or centrist students who were sharing their opinion and standing on the white lines, as was directed by Peter, she could have said exactly this. 
nobody is trying to attack her identity in any way, shape, or form, but she's coming to the table as if she's already being attacked and has to defend something. Now, when somebody gets extremely defensive, particularly about something that they identify as, does that really instill confidence in you that they truly believe what they're saying or that they're truly grounded in what they're saying? Probably not. I think the more defensive you are about something, the more you feel a little shaky about it, not the more that he feels shaky about it. Our binary society, where we've decided there's only male or female, so many people don't fit into that. And like, why do you feel like you're a man? Because you've been socialized to believe these things are associated with being a man. These things are associated with being a woman. There's only two boxes. You only feel the way you feel because somebody told you to feel that. How invalidating is that? You only are who you are because somebody told you that, that that's what you are. Not because he could identify as a male and that could just truly be his identity. No, but all, your, your identity is socially constructed. I know I'm coming to the table and telling you that I'm non-binary, which is something that has been virtually non-existent uh, through all of human uh, existence. I know that I'm telling you something that I'm non-binary, but you're actually not what you are. You're actually just what you are because somebody told you that. The, the tangled webs we weave, ladies and gentlemen. But you don't have to conform to that. That's just what society has told you from birth. Someone said, a doctor said, this person has a penis. I'm gonna assume that they have to be a man and fit into this box their whole life. But why? That's just- I, I would love to hear other voices if you wanted to say something. Engaging in this debate feels useful. Do you feel that this is a debate? That's your response? <laughs> when you say, I wanna hear from everyone else. No, I do want to, I, 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 I No, I listened and I'm processing. <laughs> would you like me to engage her? I want to hear yeah, from him. You want to hear from him? No, I want to hear from him. Okay. Do you have anything to say? No, I'm <laughs> To the cameraman. I just want to make sure. So this is, this is what I want. I don't want, the reason that I, I'm more than happy to engage you. The reason that I said that is you have how many people here? 15, I'm guessing. No, but let me finish. The reason I said that is because I don't want you to walk away and someone to say, I, you didn't give me a chance to talk. So I didn't mm. give her a chance to talk before, but that's only because I was listening to what you were gonna say. And I realized that the class is here on a lot of time. And the reason that I switched from what she had, and I'm more than happy to listen to her, is because I don't want people, Sorry, it's- Do you, they just told you their pronouns and their lived experience. Okay, then I, okay, so instead of getting- a, this is a photocopy of what I experienced at WSU, and this is on video. You guys can go and check it out if you want to. I think it's on our page. Uh, yeah, it's on. It's in our shorts. I'll drop the short in the chat. Okay, Taylor's going to drop the short of me going, and they're like, you're a transphobe, and you've said all these transphobic things. I said, okay, can you tell me a transphobic statement that I was made, that I've, that I've made? Um, I can't exactly quote you. I'd have to look it up. And I looked at this girl, and I said, can somebody get her a phone so that she can look it up? She, I'm a they, them, actually. And I, I'm they, them, I'm they, them. Okay, can somebody get them a phone so they can look up what I've said? And did we get to a conclusion on that? We did not get to a conclusion on that. And that's all that matters to them. They're gonna go home and that girl, probably that non-binary girl is gonna go home and say, he misgendered me. I got misgendered by a man on campus today and she is going to wear that oppression badge probably for the rest of the school year and go, I just cannot believe that a white cisgendered heterosexual man came onto my campus and called me she. How dare he? Okay, so this individual just told me that and I'm trying to be reasonable and I think it's better to have a conversation than for you guys to give me the finger and yell, fuck you. So you wanted to say yes, something, go better. ahead. It's already been, you, Are so you I think it's maybe important to address that she did, like just address the, you just addressed, you just called this person a Okay. And they just told you their gender was Okay, they. well, I apologize that's, and I say the they. Harm, that's the harm being done that we were talking about. Oh, it's so harmful. She's gonna cry into her pillow tonight because a man didn't get her pronouns right the first time. The first time that he was told that they are different. And can you imagine how many times it's going to happen to her in her lifetime? A lot, a lot. And again, just like the transgender student who apparently went home because they couldn't handle the sign on the sidewalk. If that's your breaking point, if that's harm for you, if that's what you have to deal with on a daily basis and that's too much for you, girl, life's gonna be too much for you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I hate to break it to you, but it gets a lot worse than somebody using your wrong pronouns. It really does get a lot worse than that. Do you accept my apology? 
Okay. It's the generation, it's a generational, you know, education. Again with the ageism. Okay. So, <laughs> that's great. That's I, I love that and I accept your apology. Uh, so isn't it better to have a conversation about this than to scream at someone from the rooftop? Mm. Oh, I don't know who, I, I, I certainly didn't scream at you from the rooftop. Did any of you guys scream? From yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you guys were screaming and minute. yelling fuck you to me and giving me the finger. Yeah, we were just saying, please go away, you're not welcome. No, I said fuck I think you. I said fuck okay. You. Okay, so is, so. Can I just, the conversation? my goal is to disrupt I mean, this. No. My goal is to disrupt okay, so I, this. I understand that you Quiet believe. Quiet part out loud. Um, yep. I can't remember where that, over there she moved, but I understand that you, you believe this stuff and we live in a democracy and other people don't have those beliefs. And I want to ask people if the reasons they have for their beliefs are justified. And this is that experiment. And your thought experiment, we don't, we actually have to go. We don't. We're we actually don't ever want our thoughts called into question. So that's just your thought experiment. Uh, so we prefer to live in the echo chamber where we constantly like little bobbleheads just follow each other and say the same things in complete uh, synchronization. And now that you've come in to ask us actual questions about our beliefs that we can choose whether or not we participate in. Like you could watch this, right? And he could tell you I'm doing a thought experiment on gender. Do you guys want to participate? And you could go, no, thank you. I'm actually going to go to class and have fun on your... No, instead, we're choosing to play the oppression Olympics right now and try to win gold for the states uh, right here on the streets, not streets, plazas, apparently, <laughs> of, of Portland State University. This is all choice, all of it. Yeah, and talk about saying the quiet part out loud. He literally said, you know, we live in a democracy. Not everyone thinks the same way as you do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to use our free speech to justify our positions. And in, in a world where we have a pluralism and people, we have to agree to disagree. We have to negotiate our differences. And they're like, we're not interested in playing that game. Right. So the game of democracy, which right. to me, again, is like <laughs> you're saying the, the quiet part out loud because <sighs> this is this is the logic at work of the of the far left right now is there's we're right. We're not interested in any middle ground. We want our rules and our way to win and yep. because we're smarter than you. And I, I can't help but be reminded of well, the comments that Sam Harris made last week that he went viral for uh, about saying, like, I don't care if there were bodies of children in the basement of Hunter mm -hmm. Biden and we had the right. evidence to show that. Um, I still think it should have been buried. Uh, even uh, The story should have been buried because that's how much I didn't want Trump to be elected and because implied in that is the people who support him are too stupid and are ushering in this too scary of a thing for me and mm -hmm. they are wrong and I'm right and I'm smart I'm the smart one they're the dumb ones and uh, we should do what I think even if it means compromising the integrity of mm -hmm. democracy to that end and for these people it's like we're not interested in democracy we know what we think your job is to be quiet old man and be educated on right. your uh, on your ignorance about these issues and why you're misgendering me and all this stuff and I I you know, I keep re referencing the postmodernism Marxism and stuff, but I mm -hmm. have to just say they're just playing it out to a T. Um, you can re literally, pr literally predict like their their whole framework of thinking based on like and interestingly enough peter bogosian's uh, collaborator in a lot of his work james Lindsay, is someone who's really helped me understand this but in marxism there's a concept called critical consciousness mm -hmm. and it's this idea that uh, once you learn the right way to think and once you look at the world achieve the correct worldview you have achieved critical consciousness and then you know how everyone else should think and you the the you should now be in control of society you should now be creating the utopia and anyone who doesn't see critical who doesn't achieve critical consciousness they either need to shut up and be educated or you get rid of them and do you not see that logic being played out in this video and yep. in our society at large yep Pretty and crazy. it just yeah it's just so much it reminds me of my experience like so much of the words that they're using the way that they talk the, the words they use when they talk is just so much like where i was before in life and this whole idea that it's on you to unlearn and relearn. You'll probably hear that a lot. Unlearn and relearn, unlearn and relearn. You're a boomer and you're part of an older generation, so I need you to unlearn what has been set uh, often in stone for a very, very long time and relearn what we have decided is the new reality. Ooh -wee. We're not part of the thought experiment. We're all social workers and we saw this harm being done and we just wanted to come here with curiosity and also some some information they're so still so committed to the idea that he's committing harm here which is crazy to me it's so crazy you keep hearing that 
interwoven throughout this whole conversation. You're doing harm, you're doing harm, you're doing harm, you're doing harm, you're doing harm. It's like they want him to leave with that message intact. And do you feel that you've spoken? Do you feel that anybody, if anybody else has something to say that that you, you haven't had an opportunity to speak? Do you feel like you've learned anything or taken but, it? But that doesn't answer my question. I just ask if anybody else has, well, would like to speak. Have... If you'd like to speak, I'm standing here. Okay. But I think to Joel's point, yeah, we hope that this was informative and helpful and sorry if saying fuck you hurt your feelings and um, you heard that? Not sorry that I said it to you. I'm just sorry that that hurt your feelings, right? I'm, I'm not sorry for, for saying the words. I'm not sorry for screaming at you. I'm not sorry for giving you the middle finger. I'm just sorry that that hurt your feelings. I'm sorry that you interpreted it that way. No, it didn't hurt my feelings. I'm glad because our student who, you know, who was hurt, we're, we're worried about them and potentially many, many others. She's so the right pronoun at least. Can, just because can we just we have a personal connection. point out the incongruency here between he's on a public square asking a question mm -hmm. and they're saying a student had to go home and because they were harmed and they said f you to him directly right and uh he's saying i'm not harmed like right. that is that if that doesn't perfectly sum up this whole scenario i don't know what does i don't know what does either gosh it's i, uh, <laughs> I don't have any words action <laughs> well i'm glad isn't it better to have a conversation with someone than to Yes. I mean, isn't that what the whole but enterprise should be about? It's not safe for everybody to have that conversation. Sometimes it's hard right? to just wow. have a conversation. It's not safe. Yeah. Wow. Especially when you're doing it like every fucking day of your yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> this is something we're fighting for and advocating for. This is our job. And all by choice. All by about. choice. Sometimes it's hard to keep all those emotions. Imagine like signing up for a job and then complaining that you have to do that job every day of your life. This is exactly what they're saying. The burden is on me that I have to explain gender to every passerby who walks up the street, but also it's my job and also it's what I'm studying and also it's what I do every, every day and also I started a club about it. You clearly have a deep attachment to whatever your perceived oppression is or your savior, savior complex for whatever group you think you're advocating for. And you love having these conversations every day. They would not be screaming at him from the roof of that building if they did not love it. They would not have come down, stood on this man's display and started yapping at him on camera if they did not love every moment of it. And I imagine that this video came out or they had this experience on that day and they probably spent the next week, two weeks, a month deconstructing all the different parts of this conversation and how oppressive it was and how and how they really came together as a team to, to bring down this evil white man. They attach themselves to this. And I I know because I was there, but you can just see it in, in the way that they're speaking. They have such a clear attachment to everything that happens. You know, if they if they went out and never met any opposition on the subject matter and everything was fine, you know, they'd be longing for the opposition. They'd be longing for somebody to come along and say, you know what, you're wrong about there being mo multiple genders and here's why and I don't agree with this and I don't believe in that. They thrive off of that type of stuff. Yeah, didn't the guy come down and say, I'm I'm here to disrupt you. I'm the one that said F you and I'm here to disrupt this. Yes. And they, Because it's like, I get, I get off on this. I get my sense of meaning and yeah. purpose in life from fighting against people like you who are standing for things like free thought and the patriarchy and the western so you're an avatar of everything wrong with america that was founded by white men who weren't enlightened as we are and we are here to disrupt that process and impose our way of thinking and right. they, and i'm very self-satisfied in that exercise and not in the exercise of actually debating the merits of my uh, positions which is all peter bogosian was trying to do right it's just like npc video game stuff like energy's getting low must go interact with white male. <laughs> like, it's literally what it is. It's literally. Shouldn't say when we see someone that we care about being harmed. And do you think that the best way for people to understand, what, what is the best way for people to understand your point of view? This right now, showing up. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what, uh, oh advocating. Advocating for the people that may feel like they don't have a voice. Okay, so the people who watch this, because this is being videoed, do you think that the people who watch this who don't agree with you as a result of having watched this will then agree with you? I'm not asking them to agree with me. But don't you want to facilitate social change? I'm just saying they shouldn't be able to be on this campus if they don't agree with me. <laughs> but I'm not asking you to agree with me. I'm just saying you are completely excluded 
from any space near me if you disagree. I'm asking you to have a different perspective to understand where we're coming from because we're trying to, we came down here to try and understand where you're coming from. Did you? No, this. Did you really though? I wish we could just rewind and find the exact moment where he said, do you want to know what's going on here and understand what I'm doing? And they all went, no. <laughs> <laughs> you see how like you get so caught up in just your goal of like trying to destroy and disrupt and invalidate that you just get lost in the words that you're saying where you don't even remember what you said, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes ago to the same person. That's how deeply set this dogma is it's truly how deeply said it is where it doesn't really matter what came out of your mouth so long as he knows that you think there's more than two genders that's really what we want to walk away uh, here knowing we want him to know that we think there's more than two genders and we want him to know that he has deeply hurt people and that he is a violent individual for doing so I, if this is okay but yeah you have to please be honest with me is that really why you came down to understand oh yeah yes yeah, yeah. We were, we were, okay and and what, what did you, what is your understanding of why I'm doing this? We don't care about your You just care about how you're feeling. It's not. <laughs> we don't care. I'm sorry, well, I haven't heard it from you. What is it? It's not. I just wanted to tell you, we don't care about your thought experiment. We care about the human. The, the impact. Whole, the yeah. impact that it's I'm having hard. on. Okay, so you didn't come down to understand why I'm doing this then. We came, to, we came down here to tell you like what you're doing is farming others. Is right, so you didn't come down to understand. That's why I asked you to please be honest. I really, oh. truly do want to understand why this even Just exists. because we didn't want to know how your game works doesn't mean we weren't coming down here. To so what is it that you understand for why I'm doing this? If you said you came down to understand why am I doing this? No, no, this, no, no, but this is, you've made a claim. You've made, you've made a claim. Yeah. Right. I'm done. You've like totally caught me in the lie that I just told. So I'm so done right now. Guys, I can't handle this. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, but what I'm amazed by is that, you know, normally I'm like, okay, I could probably handle a situation like this pretty calmly. But I feel like at like the 10 minute mark, I would have been like, uh, I, I can't deal with this anymore. And you can see he, his, his anger sort of elevating a little bit just as he, you just get worn down. I, I guess. Yeah. Your patience is just pushed to the limit because it's like, how many times can I point out the flaws in your logic? And then you just deny it and move on to really, the next really? thing. They're just like bobbing and weaving. It's like <laughs> boxing Floyd Mayweather over there. <laughs> It legit is just like that. We're almost done here, guys. I promise. We're gonna go through the last final stretch here, and then we'll wrap up. This is Maybe what. You'll watch the video and, and have and some. Do what do you think the result of people watching this video <laughs> is gonna be? What is your intent? What is the impact it's having? That's all right. What harm is being done? Oh goodness. Did we make it. We made it. Very embarrassing. You should be embarrassed by that, really. If you go back and watch that, how are you not embarrassed? It's a little embarrassing. Didn't I... he say, like, how do you how do you expect people to um, come to an understanding of your position? And then they say this. And he's like, thank you, because he meant my thought experiment right. engaging in public conversation. But what they meant was, no, by right. us coming down here and you listening to us and educating yourself on the proper way to think. That's how people should come to understand. Right. Not by us engaging in any discourse or by answering any questions right. that are critical of our, ideo of our ideology, just by people listening to us. Right. I one mean, way street. Yeah, it is very, it's just a one, one way street. One way street. This video is just, it is it is gold. It is gold. It's no wonder it has 1.2 million views because I feel like if you have somebody who like would agree with these people and you just sent them this video, it's so exposing to watch and to truly see the interaction for what it is from like you know a bird's eye view of just like oh this is what this, this is how this actually goes down. This is what they're actually fighting for, which you can't really tell in watching this video because nobody was able to truly defend their opinions, even though they're standing in a crowd full of people going against one singular man. And wow, what a lesson to learn from Peter Bogosian and how to handle a situation like that and to handle it well and, and assertively and to just remain dominant in your position while also being open to what other people have to say and truly trying to give them, give them a fair shake. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys found that interesting what should we have them drop in the comments down well below? first if you want to watch the video again or by itself it's uh the links in our description today yes but i don't know that you'll ever want to watch that again but if you do <laughs> 
it, it really is a masterclass in going against the woke mob, though, I will yeah, let say. Let us know. He does more of these videos, and they don't always go off the rails like this. They actually do the game. And so if you want us to react to one of those, you should let us know in the comments, too. Yeah. Do you guys love the chaos of having the woke mob come down, <laughs> or do you want the actual thought experiment? Should we engage with the actual thought experiment? Drop that down below. And what is the question? Hmm. How many genders are there? We have that poll right now. We have the poll on the community page. I'm thinking, what do you guys think about hate speech? I think a lot of students would have called what he was doing down here hate speech. Even having that sign is hate speech. Do you believe that hate speech is even a thing? I'm kind of on the camp of, I don't really uh, agree with the even the premise of hate speech for who can decide what hate is. Let me know your thoughts on hate speech down below. Do you think... It exists. Do you think it's something that we should, uh, you know, be looking out for, be talking about? Should we have laws against being able to say things that are hateful and, and being able to use hate speech? Uh, let me know what your thoughts are, because I imagine this is a driving force in a lot of the conversations that these young people are having on campus, because words are violence and so is silence in today's day and age. In that case, we're all extremely violent individuals and probably me more so than most people, because I talk a lot. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified when we go live. That is 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And we post other videos too. We post little short videos. We post our, our reels and our TikToks and all that fun stuff. So you'll get notified for that as well. If you'd like to listen to the podcast, go to Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and leave us a five-star reviews because a lot of left-leaning people leave us one-star reviews because they don't like what we have to say. But we're still living in the free world. We're still existent on these platforms. And if we're not, you can always go to PragerU.com and find all of our videos and content there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, drop your thoughts down below in the comments. What do you think about hate speech? Does it exist? Does it not exist? Should we legislate against it? Let me know and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.